Stepping back a little bit, let's look at the reading brain. This is a marvelous uh, video by Marinkovich that shows the activation of the brain while someone is reading a list of words. I'll do it again. Now, that's, that, uh, that's not the kind of functional imaging that I showed you before. This is done with electrical measurements of the brain, but it's the same idea. You know, the activity begins here in the visual cortex, which is where the image of the print first arrives in the brain through the visual system, but it quickly it goes forward to the anterior parts of the temporal lobe here, and it goes this way toward the phonological areas of the brain, and even the parts of the brain that recode, recode the heard phonemes into spoken phonemes so that the person can actually uh, uh, produce these phonemes when they're reading the reading list. Now, there is, in, in this particular activation, there isn't much participation of these parts of the brain which care more about meaning. So they, they, this is sort of a blind reading of a list of words. They could even be non-words or pseudo-words that have no meaning. The idea is that it's activating initially visual and then auditory visual connectivity that gets at the phonological representation. And that's, I'm showing you that there. But what is reading? That's an adult reading. Reading, uh, it, the parts of the brain that would be activated uh, with respect to reading has to do with what kind of reading you're going to be doing. And you know, it, it turns out that we don't, at all stages of reading acquisition, and you know this very well, we don't read the same way. Babies do not read at all, but they're learning the phonology of their language by the time they're nine months old or so, they have a full representation of the sound structure of their language. We know that. Uh, mostly the work of Patricia Kuhl in Seattle. These phonological representations are going to be important for them to learn to read later on. They don't know how to read, but they already have the phonological representation. As the children begin to read, they're not reading the way you and I read. They're reading letters first, if they were able to name letters and sound out letters, then they're able to put together two letters to, to, to get you a syllable and then eventually words. And, and they really have to read everything because they can't guess at the words because they don't know enough to guess. As you get to be older, you are now not really reading everywhere. You read them here and here and there and making up the rest because you, so you're using the frontal lobes to generate hypothesis about what's the most likely word that's gonna be there next so you can skip over it. Okay, so if you're reading about, you know, a biography of Seiji Osawa, the, the music conductor, every time you come to the word symphony, you don't have to read it. You know, just see the general morphology of the word, and you know it's symphony and not sympathy. Although they look pretty similar, but you know there has to be symphony because you're reading about Seiji Osawa. But if you're a child, you don't know anything about Seiji Osawa. Some of the young people here may not either. <laughs> uh, then you have to read the word because, and in fact, adults make errors because they make, project, they make sort of predictions and they're wrong. And they, then they keep reading and they say, things begin not to make sense. So they have to go back, oh, I misread that word because I made an assumption that it was gonna be there. So it's a different kind of reading and it should affect a different part of the brain. Well, we're talking about developmental dyslexia and I was showing you these little abnormalities in cortical development and I was showing you these aberrancies in the brain asymmetry. This is happening during gestation during a woman's pregnancy. This is happening around the middle of, of pregnancy, about 20 to 24 weeks of gestation. So we have to assume that the dyslexic brain, if this is causal, we have to assume that the dyslexic brain is there way before they learn their phonology, way before they learn to read. And therefore, we have to and look at the parts of the brain that were involved in acquiring phonology at that time, not where an adult is reading. So you have to start thinking that you need to look at the very low level sound processors in the brain that 
went wrong and got in the way of a child's establishing the proper phonological representation. So this is a, a very important contrast that I'm trying to make here because people tend to assume that when a child can't read, they gotta go and look at the reading areas of the brain based on knowledge acquired in adults. This is where adults read. That's not necessarily where things are gonna be wrong. They were wrong way before that. And maybe they didn't train those adult areas the lower level systems where you learn have to train the higher level systems so that they know uh, to, get, to skip over and to guess. You have to have learned to read in the first place. So uh, as I say, uh, more frontal lobe areas are involved and frontal lobe areas are the areas that have to do with executive function, attention, prediction, planning, those things that we use a lot as adults when we're reading. The children are not using those areas. They're training those areas, but they're not using those areas. They're using earlier areas. Trying to see what the shape of the letters are, how do they sound. You know, much, much more basic information coming in in the early stages of the auditory system. 